All right, guys, thanks for uh, joining on short notice. Um, just raise your hands like we do back home, and, and uh, we'll get going. Andrew Kaufman. Coach, congratulations on getting in the tournament. Um, you know, just overall, your, your thoughts on uh, on playing Oklahoma in the first round. Well, first and foremost, excited to be back in the tournament. Uh, I'm happy for our guys, our program, administration, everybody that's involved with, with, with making this go, man. It's not an easy thing to do, so certainly happy for our guys. Uh, Oklahoma, Coach Krug has done it for a long time at a high level. It's been very successful. I know they're a very talented team. In a game I remember vividly, that's why before we played Alabama, they played Alabama. So just scouted and watched that game. So very talented team. And that, was, that game was out their best score. So I know they're talented. They beat us last year in uh, Kansas City. So I'm looking forward to it. But, you know, again, we'll start breaking down film tonight. Mitchell 40. So did you come into today with any sort of expectation on seeding? And then do you use that as motivation in any way with players? Or you just say, we're in, let's go? No, I think if, if you're in a position to fight for one or two, one, two, three seeds, you, you fight for that. But, but after that, man, it's, you, you're in. You're grateful to be in. And let's play some good basketball. Now, that's how I looked at it. And I feel like we have a great opportunity, first and foremost, with Oklahoma. Ben Arnett. Conzo, you just saw these guys a year ago, um, and they bring back a lot of the same people in, in key spots. Is is last year worth looking at, back at and revisiting, or is too much time passed? Oh, yeah, we would. I, I, we would because uh, there are certain tendencies that, you know, coaches and, and, and teams have. So you would always look at that. I mean, why not? you got plenty of time to do it. But you also watch key games. And, and the biggest thing, you will probably watch at least five, six-plus game film. Um, why, I, I would certainly watch last year's game film. And then you kind of watch teams that – a similar style to how we play and how they played in that game. And, and Oklahoma is normally not a zone team, so you don't have to watch that as much, but you got to be prepared for anything. Eric Blum. Sounds kind of similar to you guys. You guys lost six of nine going into the tournament. I think they lost five of six going into the tournament. I mean, just these are two, it, it seems you guys have kind of similar resumes. Is that you think make for a usual March type of game or what do you think? Yeah, you to bring it up like that, but no, it's just, no, it's just, no, it's just it means it, we, uh, it's, 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 it's simply basketball, conference play, stuff happens, teams compete. I just think tournament times are fresh start for your teams. Oftentimes when you play in league games, teams get familiar with you. You have those same internal doubts that you have when you played because the team didn't play well, whatever, good or bad. I think I just think this is a fresh start, exciting times, man, and just you know, a tremendous opportunity. Hey, Matter? Yeah, I was going to touch on that, but how much can your team kind of benefit from um, – a, a restart or a, a refreshed time here where you get some, not time off, but time away from games. I think a great deal. I think a great deal. So, I mean, cause I, I, I thought it was great. You playing Saturday. So it gives you enough time to practice. I thought we, we practiced for like an hour this morning. I thought we had great energy in that morning practice. And, and I think for us, the, the, the more we're able to practice, the better we are as a team. And just to get back to kind of who we are going inside, outside, good shot selection on a consistent base. And part of good shot selection is being able to get the ball inside to Jeremiah when he's assertive and he's aggressive. Because when that doesn't happen, if he's not assertive, then all of a sudden you got questionable shots in there because guys are kind of out of their character, so to speak. So we got to get the ball inside to him and, and just flow through him. Ben Hawking. I just wanted to follow up on Jeremiah. Um, maybe not the best SEC tournament for him, but a good game prior to that against South Carolina. Uh, what needs to happen at practice this week, preparation, to make sure you get the best out of your big man? It's really just him understanding who he is, getting back to that. Uh, you know, again, obviously, you, you know, he had to leave the team, and that was uh, understood. So now just him getting, getting acclimated, getting back to playing the way he knows how to play the game, playing with energy, playing with passion, running the floor, rebounding, and just even watching screens, when he's setting those screens, diving to the rim aggressively, all those little things that made him good. He just got to get back to it. And, and again, play, we got plenty of time to watch, plenty of film, and he'll get back there. He'll get back. Jack Sobel. Conzo, uh, you guys played in plenty of games that came down to the wire, uh, and you made, made some plays to win some of those games. Uh, how, how much does that experience help you heading, heading into the tournament? I think it helps, but I think more than anything, as, as well as we'd like to see Jeremiah play, I think when you get in, in, into these type of environments, you got to have good guard play. you got to have good guard play. That, that means defending, taking care of the ball, making timely free throws, good possessions. 
not turning the ball over, sound jump stops, making good decisions. You got to have good guard play when it, this time of year because they, they can get you over the hump. Because you obviously got to have somebody to get Jeremiah the ball, get him easy looks, get him good opportunities, keep him out of foul trouble when you guard another guy's best players, man. But you got to have guard play, man. And I think it's important. Yes, and we've been in those type of games where we got to be sound down the stretch of those games. Bill Pollock? Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Conzo, for your time. Um, two questions. Where's the confidence level of your team? And then uh, just talk about playing in the bubble and the preparations that may be different or how you go about that just with this tournament. I guess I, 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 I assume I can answer that question for you at a later date because we haven't had practice yet here. But I mean, it's a part of every, everybody has to do it. So, so the adjustment would be for everybody. So as far as being in the bubble, confidence, I, I've never worried about confidence with guys, man, it's basketball. You have some guys that, that are shooters, shot and falling, you got to get reps in there. And, and I think oftentimes with confidence, get, getting the first one or two to go, but also the preparation, getting them to go. I mean, because again, if you're a shooter, nobody's going to make it easy on this time. So that means you got to be strong in your preparation, strong in your drive, strong in your decision-making, your shot prep, all those things that makes you good. But I, I think confidence, and I, again, I've always said this to our guys, don't get so consumed with your shots falling or not. Because if you defend, rebound, and play as hard as you can play, you don't have to worry about that. But if you can, if you consume with whether or not the shot goes in, that's your whole focus. I think that's when guys have a tendency to struggle. Uh, back to Mitchell Forty. Con, so I think Jeremiah is the only player on this team who's actually played in an NCAA tournament game before. How do you kind of strike the balance between you know making sure guys enjoy this experience and the fact that it doesn't come around too often without making the moment big? Well, again. It's, it's, it's off the time the stage sets itself. You're in the NCAA tournament. Right? You're playing against a very talented program in Oklahoma, a lot of history at Oklahoma and Mizzou. And you're trying to win a basketball game. So the energy will take care of itself. But, but up until that point, you got to enjoy the moment. Because oftentimes you go so hard, you, you stress out so much, you never get a chance to enjoy it. I mean, it's Drew Bucks, NCAA tournament, Drew Smith, NCAA tournament, Mark Smith, all these guys, first opportunity. Man, you, you have to enjoy this. I, I get food to tell those guys not to enjoy it. They have to enjoy it the best of their abilities, have fun, rejoice in it, be glad, all those things, man, because you, you made it to, you worked hard to get to this point. So you have to enjoy it because the game will take care of itself. We'll practice all, we'll compete and all that, but you got to enjoy being in Indiana because this is historic times. I don't know if there'll ever be another venue like this in the NCAA tournament, at least up until this point. We're in the Speedway right now having a great time. Had a chance to go around the Speedway track. It's beautiful, man. So you, you have to enjoy it, man, because these are like Drew Bugs, Drew Smith, them guys are seniors. You don't get this again. Aaron Ladd. Coach, you talked about building consistency last time and trying to be as consistent as possible. When you're in a one win or go home scenario, what do you lean on when you've been inconsistent down the stretch? Well, that's it. Uh, well, I think what happens, man, when, when inconsistencies, uh, it's, it's really focused, just focus on the task at hand. Concentrate on the things we work on in practice. But again, we're, we're as good as any if we're whole. We're all together, inside, outside play. Jeremiah's been effective. Three-point timely shots are falling, we're defending, we're getting stops, all those things. So they go hand in hand. When that doesn't happen, now all of a sudden there's a guy that shoots a shot uncharacteristically. There's a guy that drove the ball and it's really not his strength to get himself in trouble. Those sorts of things happen. So what we have to do, we have to make the thing flow and do what we do in practice and execute what we're doing. And I think we're good. But, I mean, but good teams make you get out of character. That's, that's what, when you're, at the, when you're at this level and this setting, good teams, Oklahoma do something where we have to make an adjustment. We will do some where they have to make an adjustment. But but in that, you have to still make sound decisions and you cannot turn the ball over. That's important. Tyler Hollins. Coach, this being your fourth NCAA tournament team, I'm wondering, does this current squad, whether it be a certain player, resemble or remind you of any of your past NCAA tournament squads? I don't, I don't know. That's always different, man. It's just different mindsets, different culture, I mean, different DNA of guys. You know, some guys have real edge. Some guys are so chippy in practice every day. You got to calm them down. You know, we, we have guys with different type of demeanor. Uh, so it, it just, no, I, I, I wouldn't say that. I just think it's a new team. It's a unique team. Experienced guys, I, I would consider this group a laid back group more, more so than other teams I've probably had. Eric. Hansa, we know Saturday and we know somewhere in the state of Indiana. Do you have any timeline for when you find more information out about, about when your actual game time is? I'm hopeful we'll find out tomorrow because uh, I think I think between tonight and tomorrow we all you know COVID protocol, so we'll just be in our hotel rooms. I'm not sure how much we'll have interaction with each other just because of the COVID testing and all that. So but that's all I have right now.
Pax Kaufman. Kind of going off that, have you guys like entered the the bubble yet? Or are you guys waiting to enter? What's the process? So right now, we're in uh, you know all the teams that got here early. Uh, we're in Speedway, uh, and basically around the track in, the, in these suites, and, and watched it from the suites. Uh, and I, I would imagine when this is over, uh, we'll start uh, circling out of here at some point. Yes, but we're still in Speedway as we speak. Go ahead. <laughs> Just Go to follow ahead, up on that, um, how do you think your your team will handle a, a bubble like you know situation where you just kind of probably in your hotel room and that's all you can do? I don't think they'll be too bad. They're on those video games all day, anyway, so I think they'll be fine. <laughs> I think they'll be fine. Uh, bye, hey, hey, Conzo, c- kind of related to that. Um, what what went into the decision to go right from uh, Nashville to Indy? Uh, was that sort of a mandatory thing or it was a, a, a school decision? It was, more, it was more the SEC and, and, and kind of the NCAA just saying we'd, we'd rather, because they didn't want us to come early and then have to go get a hotel. They want you to go direct when you, when you come in, the, the, the COVID protocols and the procedures, you do that, you drop your bags off, you do all your testing, then they'll tell you which hotel you go to. So they, they didn't want any teams coming unless you absolutely had to. Is that – in a sense, good for you. You've had a little more ability to just have them at your beck and call and sort of, you know, just keep everything under under wraps. Yeah, but, you know, our guys have been professionals about that. They understand what we have to do. They, they've been great all season with that, taking care of their bodies, staying out of harm's way. So that part has been good. Uh, Bill Pollock again. Yeah. Um, what's it mean to you to uh, be playing back in Indiana and, you know, kind of a homecoming for you sort of, right? I mean, it's good. You know, my, my mother-in-law lives here. My brother, my son goes to school here, man. Just, you know, I spent 18 years of my life in, in Indiana. I mean, it's good, but, but, but truthfully, the most important thing is trying to get basketball wins. I mean, I'm, just, I'm happy to be here, man. It's exciting times. I mean, with the bubble, I won't get a chance to see anybody. Uh, so that's part of it. I mean, it just, but, but it, more than anything, I'm really happy for these guys, man, to get back in the NCAA tournament. It really means a lot to me, man. I just, guys fought they fought hard went through some some bumps in a row stayed the course and just to give these guys an opportunity to transition out uh, when their career is over from a college standpoint to be in the tournament is a great feeling Dave matter Gonzo did you have any quick thoughts on how the the committee viewed the SEC I think LSU is an eight and I know Alabama was hoping to get a one and, and didn't get that did, did you think there was maybe undervalued your league somewhat uh, respect. That's probably always the case in some. I mean, I just think because because it's such a high power league and football is so big and it's so successful. And then I, I think what happens when, when Kentucky's not in that, you assume that the league is down, which is a great league. I mean, LSU can score. LSU and Alabama can score as well as anybody in the country. You you pick the team as anybody in the country. I mean, the job that Mike White has done is a, is a remarkable job. You you lose the player that you're in the conference and the way they stayed the course. Man, it's unbelievable. But I, but I, I think, it, but when I was in the league the first time, I felt that way, you know. But it, that's why you got to go out there and just do the job. Got time for two more, so we can get to the players. Uh, ben Hoffman, Conzo, uh, four years in Mizzou, two NCAA tournaments. Can you just describe uh, your emotions with that and what that means to you and and for your staff and and program? It's great, man. It's, it's hard work, man. And and and. and, and hindsight or you can say whatever you want to say until I, I, I like to think it would have been more if John Tate Ford wouldn't have been injured. You know, you're talking about guys with potential for the year in this conference. But it's part of it. Man. I'm, just, I'm happy for our guys. We stayed the course here. Um, we, we continue to fight. And I, I think our program is in a great place. We'll continue to get better. But it's a, it's a great feeling. And I think we're really just getting started. Mason. Hey, Coach, you've talked a lot this season about not looking at the rankings too much or what position you're put into. Is that sort of the same mentality now that's March Madness as opposed to rankings in the regular season? Oh, this is just basketball when you get to this point. I mean, you, you, you can sit there and say, man, I'd like to have that CD. You look at a 4 C plan. Uh, like, for example, Oklahoma State is a high-level team. They're playing against Liberty. Ooh, man. <laughs> you look at those, so let's regroup. And just be, but but you're here now, and it's just it's it's simply basketball, and, and, it, and it's really a culmination of what you do best, and you have to impose your will on it, just like that team will try to impose their will on you. Thanks, coach. All right, you want 